Copyright applies to the following verbal and written content. With the exception of the content owner, complete content excerpts and links may be used for nonprofit purposes only, provided that full and clear credit is given to the following names wherein Diary Single Woman, Diary of a Single Woman, and Miss Anonymous. Appropriate and specific direction to the original content must be used. All rights are reserved. Hi, I'm Miss Anonymous with Diary of a Single Woman. I hope that you have been enjoying my true erotic stories from my diary. Yes, I do have a lot more true stories to share with you, but in the meantime, I have a proposition for you. Yes, a proposition. I want you to take a journey with me. Take a journey into a mysterious taboo and intriguing world of sensual fiction. A world that offers a place for you to escape from your normal daily life. A world that expands your mind beyond boundaries. Beyond boundaries you never knew you had. A world where you discover intimate thoughts and feelings you thought you were incapable of. A place where you can indulge in nail-biting stories. Oh yeah, this is going to be so damn good. I'm writing this lustful, adventurous novel just for you. I've named this series as a tribute to the breathtaking trilogy that had us all glued to our books and movie screens. Well, fasten your seatbelts, or should I say, unfasten your seatbelts and get ready to live life on the edge. Welcome to Fifty Shades of Red. As Ethan drives us through the Iron Gate, I couldn't help but wonder that Ethan had done this before, but with another woman, perhaps. I mean, I know he's dated other women prior to dating me, but something just feels odd about this night. When I was in the warehouse with Ethan and Valentina, I sensed a familiar routine between the two. Ethan had inquired which room Valentina would have us in tonight. It seemed as though Ethan had experienced the other rooms before. How odd I felt when I saw the puzzled look on Josh's face when he realized that I was Ethan's new date to the event. My intuition tells me there's something more to this story, but I just can't put my finger on it. As we travel down the road, on the far left is a well-lit stone and marble sign with the words Pylon Estates engraved on it. We start approaching a huge house, well, maybe more like a mansion, as I notice three to four smaller houses spread out across the estate. The mansion was all brick and three stories high. What really jumped out at me were the black windows. That was odd. I've heard of tinted house windows before, but I thought they were mostly in extremely hot and sunny places like Arizona or Texas. A gorgeous tiered water fountain was located near the entrance of the mansion. Bright lights illuminated the water as it flowed to each tier. The half-mooned driveway in front of the mansion had burgundy bricks. I see several gentlemen in 
burgundy coats, white shirts, and black pants standing around the driveway in a line that follows the half-moon shape. Ethan pulls the Porsche around, and we are immediately approached by two of the burgundy coat gentlemen. They open our doors and greet us. That's when it hit me that this event was a big deal. I am going to get a lot of new clients for Elite Designs. By the look of this mansion and the luxury cars pulling in, I just hit a gold mine. More luxury vehicles continue to pull into the Half Moon driveway as we follow other guests up the marble stairs leading up to the mansion entrance. Two burgundy coat gentlemen held iron doors open as we entered into the foyer. We were greeted by soft piano and violin music, chandeliers, and the growing chatter of simultaneous conversations from other guests. There were so many people here. Everyone was wearing black velvet of some sort. The men were in tuxedos with black velvet bow ties, and the women were in black velvet dresses. Some dresses were long and elegant, while others were short and daring. I guess my dress fit into the short and daring category. As we entered into the room, four women dressed in black leather harnesses, black fishnet stockings, and black velvet high heel shoes were holding silver trays of wine and champagne, trying not to stare. I was trying to figure out if I saw what I thought I saw. Would you like wine or champagne? One of the ladies said to me. Um, I'll take champagne, thank you, I replied. As she handed me the champagne, I confirmed what I saw. The women had their breasts completely exposed. I mean nipples and everything. Their breasts were picture perfect. They were plump and sat evenly on their chest area. Okay, I was not expecting to see that. Oh my goodness, are we at the Displaced Women Fundraiser event? I thought to myself. I continued to follow Ethan further into the room, keeping up with his pace so that we didn't get separated. I started to see more women with the same outfit and their breasts exposed, holding silver trays of hors d'oeuvres. Ethan approaches a gentleman holding a silver tray of cocktails. The gentleman wasn't wearing a shirt and was quite buff. He wore a black velvet bow tie and black leather pants that had the butt portion cut out, exposing his muscular, well-toned ass. Okay, I am confused. What kind of charity event is this? I mumbled to myself. Ethan requested a cocktail from the gentleman and continued to walk further into the room. More buff men with toned asses were standing around holding silver trays of cocktails and hors d'oeuvres. Ethan, Ethan, I whispered, trying to get his attention. Ethan looks over at me. Why are these people dressed like this? Is this the dinner party fundraiser event? I inquired. Ethan smiles and says, Yes, this is the fundraiser event. Right now, this is the social hour. The servers are dressed in a way to make things, well, a little more interesting for us. Ethan answered, Interesting was an understatement. Sexual would be more appropriate. Ethan, it's good to see you again, my friend. I'm glad you could rejoin us. A man with a deep voice said, Hi, Dominic. It's good to see you, too. 
I've been busy with, well, you know, Ethan responded. Dominic then said, I know most of us has been there at one time or another. I'm just happy you're back and well. I wondered what the two were talking about. Obviously, the two had prior knowledge about something. Oh, and who is this lovely lady? Dominic inquired. This is Kiva, Miss Kiva Jamerson, my beautiful date for tonight. Ethan introduced as Dominic reached for my hand. Holding my hand, his warm thumb gently brushed across the top of it. As he said, Wow, beautiful indeed. You look stunning in black and red. I felt a quiver run across my face as he stared deep down into my eyes. I responded, Thank you. This was all Ethan's doing. Dominic replied with a mischievous grin on his face. I see. Ethan always knows how to put on the finishing touches. He releases my hand and turns towards Ethan. Several of us are in the red lounge socializing before we go upstairs for dinner, Dominic said. Okay, we will join everyone there. Ethan replied as he took hold of my waist, signaling for me to follow. The red lounge? What is up with this color red? Red lipstick? Red jewelry? The color red turning Ethan on? We walked by several closed door rooms with titles engraved above the entrances. There was the gray lounge. The Gold Lounge, the Blue Lounge, and here we were arriving in front of the Red Lounge. Dominic opens the double doors. The room was low lit with soft red, burgundy, and beige colored lighting. Long red velvet couches perfectly outline the wall, allowing for an open space in the middle of the room. Seductive instrumental music was playing throughout the lounge. Servers were standing at small round tables tucked away in various corners of the room. The male servers' outfits were red, but was the same style as I saw before. No shirts, a velvet bow tie, and leather pants with the butt area cut out, designed to expose their toned asses. The women servers were in red harnesses, with their large upright breasts exposed. Wine, champagne, cocktails, and hors d'oeuvres covered the tables. There were at least 25 couples in the lounge, all wearing their black velvet attire. Oh my goodness. On the walls were large plasma televisions with naked people having sex. Am I seeing this correctly? I must be hallucinating. There was no sound coming from the television. As I continued to stare at the screen, my mind was trying to catch up with what my eyes were seeing. This was some sort of artistic, sexual expression. On the television screen, red colors of paint would splash and splatter against a white background, then mysteriously evaporate into red raindrops. Next, a naked man and woman would slowly start to fade into the picture again. The naked woman was on her knees, with them sunken into a large white pillow. Her posture was stiff as her back stayed upright. The naked man was standing up tall right behind her, with his steel elongated and fully erect. Here comes the red paint again, splash, splatter, then the red raindrops. 
And now the naked man was on his knees with them sunken into the white pillow. And the naked woman was now standing up behind him with an elongated, erect dildo on. What the hell is this? I thought to myself as I felt the nervousness in my stomach travel its way up to my throat, realizing I hadn't had a sip of my champagne yet. I lift the glass up to my lips and take the biggest gulp I could handle. This ends chapter three, part two. Tune in next week for chapter four, part one, for more of the Red Lounge. Up next, as sexual artistic expressions continue to play out on the TV screens, Kiva tries her best to keep her nerves in check as she holds regular conversations with the other guests in the Red Lounge, but her nerves unravel even more. Find out why you don't want to miss what's next. Here's a question for you. Based on what Kiva saw, would you be aroused or uncomfortable at the event? Don't forget to subscribe. I will be releasing an unscripted video for Chapter 3, Part 2 in the next few days. This is going to be so juicy. Yours truly, Miss Anonymous.